Good morning and welcome. If you would like to mark the Liturgy of the Word this morning in your books, it is number 1170, number 1170. Please join us in our opening song this morning, number 634, Come You Thankful People Come, number 634. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, we want to welcome all of you who have come to celebrate with us this 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time. In a special way, we welcome our visitors. We also welcome those who are watching us live stream, and those who will watch us later in the day recorded. Let us acknowledge our sins so as to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of your Father, Lord have mercy. mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Now let us give glory to God.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, when the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Now would those going to children's liturgy please come forward. My dear children, today you will hear about how God cares for his people and all of creation. He loves us, he watches over us, and helps us to grow, just like the owner of a vineyard takes care of all his grapevines. We ask Jesus to help us grow healthy and strong. Let us pray. Good and gracious God. We ask you to look with love upon your children gathered here. Help them to realize how much you love them and care for them. Help them to grow up healthy and strong so that they may serve you by loving and caring for others and for all of creation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now you may go to children's liturgy. Go and listen to the word of God. Go and listen to the word of God. God has the words of everlasting life. God has the words of everlasting life. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me now sing of my friend my friend's song concerning his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He spaded it, cleared it of stones, and planted the choicest vines. Within it, he built a watchtower and hewed out a wine press. Then he looked for the crop of grapes, but what it yielded was wild grapes. Now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard than I had not done? Why, when I looked for the, grape, the crop of grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? Now I will let you know what I mean to do with my vineyard. Take away its hedges, give it to grazing, break through its wall, let it be trampled. Yes, I will make it a ruin. It shall not be pruned or hoed, but overgrown with thorns and briars. I will command the clouds not to send rain upon it, and the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his cherished plant. He looked for judgment, but see bloodshed, for justice, but hark the outcry, the word of the Lord. Today's psalm can be found on page 93 in your book. God while I live. Put 
put no trust in the powerful, mere mortals in whom there is no help. Take their breath, they return to clay, and their plans that day come to nothing. They are happy who are helped by Jacob's God, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who alone make heaven and earth, the seas and all they contain. I will praise the Lord all my days, make music to my God while I live. Music to my God while I live. It is the Lord who keeps faith forever, who is just, to the oppressed. It is God who gives bread to the hungry, the Lord who sets prisoners free. It is the Lord who gives sight to the blind, who raises up those who are bowed down, the Lord who protects the stranger and upholds the widow and orphan. I will praise the Lord all my days, make music to my God while I live. Music to my God while I live. It is the Lord who loves the just, but thwarts the path of the wicked. The Lord will reign forever. Zion's God from age to age. I will praise the Lord all my days, make music to my God while I live, make music to my God while I live. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again he sent other servants more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, thinking, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, he will put those men to a wretched, wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scriptures, The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, the parable in today's Gospel is a parable of salvation history. William Barclay's commentary on this parable reminds us that in, in interpreting a parable, It is normally a first principle that every parable has only one point and that the details are not to be stressed. Normally, to try to find a meaning for every detail is to to make the mistake of treating the parable as an allegory. But in this case, it's different. In this parable, the details do have a meaning. In this parable, the landowner is God, The vineyard is the people of Israel. The tenants are the leaders of the people. The servants of the landowner are the Old Testament prophets who were often persecuted and killed. The son is Jesus. In this parable then, Jesus summarizes the history of Israel and prophesies his own death and the beginning of the church. When we think of prophets, even biblical prophets, We often think of people who predict the future. However, the role of Old Testament prophets was not to predict the future, but to interpret the presence and challenge the people. True prophets almost inevitably make people uncomfortable. We need to realize that God sends prophets both to us personally and to the church. This parable then offers a cautionary tale to us. For example, on one occasion, when Jesus himself was rejected by his listeners, he said, a prophet is not without honor except in his native place and his own house. This was Jesus' way of saying that familiarity often breeds contempt. When we know someone's limitations, weaknesses, and even faults, we do not want to be challenged by them. And likewise, we need to realize that God can and does does call us to be prophets to others. And sometimes we are unwilling because we know our own limitations, weaknesses, and faults. This is a challenging time in the church. Right now there are so many different voices in the church trying to tell us what we should think and believe and do. I do not know about you, but I am often very frustrated 
with what I hear and read. I think one of the reasons Pope Francis has called the Synod on Synodality is to be a church, is to be the church in a very old yet very new way. In the world in which we are living, where everyone has an opinion and a platform, I think he understands that we need to listen to many different voices, but more importantly, listen to the Holy Spirit. Throughout the New Testament, the church is referred to as a building. At the end of this parable, Jesus reminds us that he is the cornerstone of the church. St. Paul wrote that the church is built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. St. Peter calls us to be like living stones to be built into a spiritual house. That Christ is the cornerstone of the church, that the church is built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, and that we are the living stones who make up the church should give us great hope for the future. I believe this synod will be prophetic. My brothers and sisters, everything we see on the news or read tells us that so many people, especially young people, are suffering from anxiety. There are all kinds of reasons for this anxiety, and I will confess that lots of things make me anxious. For so many people, this anxiety is debilitating. This anxiety is so debilitating for so many people that they need medical treatment. We also know that the rate of suicide has skyrocketed, skyrocketed for young people. However, at the end of his letter to the Philippians, Paul offers one help for dealing with anxiety. He invites us to ask God for what we need while thanking God for what we have. He invites us to entrust our lives and futures to God and to Christ. And if we do, he promises that the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now let us pray, joining in the praise of the living God, for we are his people, and let us also pray in a special way for peace in the Middle East. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the bishops and all the participants in the Synod, that proposals may spring forth from their listening to the Holy Spirit so that the entire people of God may feel that they are truly participating in the life of the church and be living an attractive witness to the newness of the gospel in the world, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For us gathered here, that by tasting the goodness of the Lord that comes to each one in the body and blood of Jesus, we may receive from him a fresh view of our neighbor and be made witnesses to the generosity in the world in which we live, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, as we celebrate Respect Life Month, may we recommit ourselves to upholding the dignity of every human life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For refugees and those seeking asylum worldwide, may God help them find a safe place to begin a new life, we pray. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For all with mental illness, particularly those with depression, that God's healing love will free them and open new possibilities for them, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, especially Kristen and Judson Crane's niece, Jacqueline Shaw, and Eileen McFadden's brother, Dennis Fahey, who died recently, and Joe Thee, for whom this Mass is offered. May God welcome them to the heavenly banquet, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions we recall now in silence, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, from the days of Abraham and Moses until this gathering of your church in prayer, you have formed a people in the image of your Son. Bless this people with the gift of your kingdom. May we serve you with our every desire and show love for one another even as you have loved us. We pray for peace in the Middle East. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Gift bearers for today's Mass are Bridget Geeden and Etta Sykes.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim 
by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Therese, the little flower, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Charles, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of, of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
You too can come deeply, come to deeply know Christ through the upcoming study of Jesus and the Eucharist that begins this week. Details are in the bulletin. Sign up is in the back of church today. The Adventuresome group will meet this Wednesday, October 11th, following the 11 a.m. Mass. This month, members of Little Flower's eighth grade class will join us for Mass and lunch. Following lunch, we will decorate pumpkins. Sign-up sheets are available at the doors of the church, or you may call the parish center if you plan on attending. The Ladies Club will be collecting small travel-sized toiletries for donation to homeless members of our community. There will be baskets at all doors for collection. We will be assembling the care packages at our November meeting. Your generosity is appreciated. There will be more information in next week's bulletin. Please join us for coffee and donuts immediately following Mass in the school cafeteria. Last week I announced that we have hired Gavin Craig as our new music director. He's with us today. He was the cantor at the, for the uh, scripture response, so let's welcome him. Gavin, stand up. <laughs> I too would like to invite you to the study of Jesus and the Eucharist, which starts, I believe, tomorrow night. Um, as they mentioned, details are in the Teresian, sign-up sheets are in the back. This is one of our initiatives as a parish to do our part for the, peri for the year of the parish Eucharistic revival. We're all engaged in that as a three-year process, and so this is one of the initiatives. So please, sign up. On a very sad note, over the years, many of you have ha may have noticed the framed first-class relic of St. Therese that sat on the St. Therese altar longer than I've been pastor. Recently, someone cut into the backing of the frame and stole the relic. Please pray for the person that he or she will return the relic, no questions asked, and that God will forgive him or her I have to believe that the person who stole the relic must have some kind of devotion to St. Therese. There are other, if we're looking to sell things, for the most part, there are other things in church worth, you know, far more than a, than a little cross, you know, and had to know what it was. So again, it's a very sad day in our parish history. Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume, through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, Jesus promised to be present in the midst of his disciples gathered in his name. Last, on October 4th, Pope Francis opened the first session of the 16th Ordinary General Assembly of the Synod of Bishops. Invoking the blessing of the Lord, we lift our minds to God that by the stirring of the Holy Spirit he may strengthen our communion, lead us to all truth, and enlighten the participants of the Synodal Assembly without ceasing. The Lord be with you. And with you. Bow down your heads and pray for God's blessing, answering amen to each of the invocations. May our God and Father, who in many and various ways spoke to our fathers through the prophets, direct you and the whole church in fidelity to his word and in discernment of his will. Amen. May the only begotten Son, sent in the fullness of time to manifest to all the riches of the Father's mercy, keep you in communion with himself and your brothers and sisters. Amen. May the Holy Spirit lead you all, and especially the Senatal Assembly, to perceive the signs of the times so that adhering to the will of God in all things, you may bear the abundant fruit of unity by promoting the life of the church and witnessing to the gospel. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Our closing song is number 742, The Church's One Foundation, number 742.